as you can tell, I create unbreakable and everlasting relationships with the families that I come in contact. Before this incident, I never had any reprimands. I'm a little emotional. <sighs> I'm so sorry. She was once named Beltaire Elementary School Teacher of the Year. Now, Abby Cook is without a job. Cook was under investigation and initially suspended for one day without pay for appearing in a TikTok video with her sixth grade students dancing to a popular Lizzo song that contains profanity and makes references to alcohol. The veteran teacher presented the board with 60 letters of support and pleaded to save her job of 12 years. I know I made a mistake. I apologize for that mistake. I'm My first offense did not harm a child. It was just a stupid, stupid mistake that I made. And now my career will end. School board member Jill Woolbright sent emails to the superintendent calling Cook's behavior deplorable, disturbing, and appalling. However, speaking at the last school board meeting, Woolbright said board members did not know there was an investigation taking place. The school board monthly votes on personnel issues as brought to us by the superintendent and her staff. I didn't even know what the investigation was about or the results of the investigation until I was getting emails from the public and I went to the person that did the investigation today and had a discussion, so now I know. But I can't share any of that. That's personal. The board voted 3-1 to one not to reappoint Cook. That's a decision she can't appeal. School board member Cheryl Massaro cast the sole no vote and called for stronger social media policies in the district. It's called the social media trap. And I think so many of us are getting caught up in it. And so are our educators. There's no doubt about that. Our educators are getting caught up in that. We're going to have to do better at making sure that people understand what it is and how to avoid conflict. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. A Flagler Palm Coast High School student who led a walkout over Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay Law talks about why he organized the protest. Jack Pedo says the measure has a specific target, but has an unlimited interpretation. I think the bill is written to be intentionally vague. And, you know, it's targeting the LGBTQ community. Senator Brands, he's a Republican, actually, and he asked for an amendment changing the verbiage to sex. And, you know, Republicans shot that down. So it's quite clearly targeted against the community. And it's written and vague enough so that, you know, there can be pretty broad silencing of us. You know, even if it's just saying I have two moms in these grades, it's, 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 it's quite expansive. Jack says that one goal of the walkout was to show the law's divisiveness. Overall, we're just trying to promote inclusivity. I think that at home, a lot of LGBTQ people experience a lot of abuse. They don't you know, feel comfortable expressing themselves freely. And school is that space where they can express themselves. I know I first came out to, in school to my friends before I was comfortable coming out at home. And I'm lucky to have a, a safe home where I can do that. So I think providing necessary accommodations for students to feel comfortable at school, I don't see an issue. At. He was recently invited to the White House to witness President Biden sign an executive order on LGBTQ rights. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. The city of Flagler Beach is looking for your help. The day after Independence Day is the monthly beach cleanup event on July 5th. Flagler Beach Police Chief Matt Downey says his crew is organized and ready for help from Flagler Beach All-Stars like you. Well, the All-Stars are just that. They're local citizens and business owners that, uh, that live here and have a vested interest in keeping our beaches clean. And the All-Star part of it is anybody can be an All-Star. You just got to have some passion like they do. And they go out usually every Saturday, the first Saturday of the month, the day after first Friday and clean up the beach. He adds keeping the beach clean should be important to everyone for further enjoyment. We'll be handing out trash bags on the 4th of July for folks that stop by the pier. We'll also have officers on ATVs handing out garbage bags. Then at the last few years, and it works really, really great, they take the garbage bags when they get ready to leave and they pull them up by the dune walkovers. The Flagler Beach All-Stars event will begin at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, July 5th. For Flagler's Morning News. I'm Karen Johnson. 
with the inflation ticking up like it has, we're seeing an increase again. That's Tom, who spends his time in retirement volunteering at the Grace Community Food Pantry in Benel, where he says the need these days is huge, reminiscent to the times we saw in 2020 when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. The whole idea with the with the food bank, the food closet, is to provide for those who, who don't have it or they, they just need a little extra to get by today. But really, it, the whole idea is to be more like Christ, to serve others. Tom says local farmers are generous with providing their produce, and you can help too. Flagler Broadcasting has launched the Million Dollar Foodathon, which between now and July 8th aims to collect enough money to provide $400 worth of food to each family in need. If you can spare the funds, Tom promises it's a good cause and reminds us that hard times can fall upon us all. Would you want somebody to do for you? From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. What services does the Flagler County Community Paramedicine Program provide? Rob Arrett, on a recent episode of Flagler Health Matters, said information and coaching. People come to us from being discharged from the hospital and they mm-hmm. may have questions regarding their discharge paperwork. Or as I alluded to earlier, we can help them get their medications that are needed and make sure they're following a plan. Eric said that paramedics see people for about 60 to 90 days after they leave the hospital to make sure that they're following their plan as it was laid out by the hospital. Flagler Health Matters is on WNZF on Saturday mornings at 1130 and anytime on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, paramedicine and Narcan. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.